selfishness. Okay. Is it truly God's will? Are there things that has happened to you in this business and you came to the conclusion that it is, the, it is God's will? It is God's will that I will have this. It is God's will that I shouldn't have had this. Have you come to that conclusion? Now, many times we have come to that conclusion, but something happened to me yesterday and something has happened also in experience shared um, by my mentor to me that I'm going to share with us that will help us understand truly what when we say, before we conclude, it's God's will. We look at some things. Now, what happened yesterday? Uh, in Abuja currently, there is a fuel scarcity in Abuja currently. And I, I finished from church and decided I want to go look for fuel. Okay, I, I found out that buying on Sundays, even if the, there was scarcity, you could get um, fuel easily. So what did I do? I, I, I drove down towards the airport and then the, the, the second filling station by the right, A.A. Rano, um, this filling station, I had, I, I've never, I can't even remember having gone there ever to buy, a, 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 buy fuel. Now, the filling station is very big with about um, more than 10 serving pumps, filling pumps. So when I got there, when I was driving close, I was on this um, service lane. So when I was driving close, I saw a queue in front of the gate. Now, the queue was just at the entrance. There were about, there weren't much. My first calculation, it wasn't much, okay? The queue was not much. So um, I joined. I joined the queue. And then 10 minutes passed. Now, what I noticed was that the gate was locked and they were serving some people inside there. Now, I stayed in the car. And uh, I still had some little for up the quarter time. So I just continued with my ACA music and all that. Then 10 minutes passed, 20 minutes passed, 30 minutes passed. I became worried. Wow, they are not opening this gate. And I see cars leaving from the exit gate, which means they are selling. Okay, 45 minutes. I started looking, should I just get away from this queue? I hate this kind of queue. I hate staying one hour. Now, 60 minutes, 80 minutes, getting to 90 minutes, one hour, 30 minutes. In between then, some guys were getting up, getting out from their car, going into the filling station. After a while, they now came out in a hurry as if they were about to open the gate. And then they opened the gate. So the moment they opened the gate, it was before they opened the gate that I actually calculated in my head. I now checked, there are three rows in front of the gate, three rows, three rows of cars. And from what each row had about, um, 10 cars before me. That's each, the row I was on was 10 cars before me, but there are three of these rows, which means give or take about 30 cars are in front of me, but in three rows of 10, 10, 10. So when they opened the gate, we went in. So I looked for the pump that people didn't notice. So I drove to that pump and then we stayed on the pumps, waited, waited, waited. And then it was my turn. I, because my, 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 my tank opening, my, my, the opening to my tank was on the other side. So I had to reverse and then turn and then position it. Now, before I reversed to turn, the pump attendant said, okay, turn it this way so that I can do it sharp, sharp. And in my mind, I was like, what's the sharp, sharp? What is it about the sharp, sharp? I've been here for more than 90 minutes. There is no sharp, sharp anything, no. So when I reversed and opened my, I, I even asked her, oh, I have a five liters in my boots. Would you be able to fill it for me? She said, oh, yeah, bring it up. So I brought it up, opened my boot, opened my fuel tank. And the lady walked in front of me and was just moping. Just looking at me in gaze. 
I'm like, oh yeah now. He said, she spoke to the other attendant. Guess what? The safe well has finished. <laughs> they said fuel has finished. I said, I don't understand. No, I don't understand. I have been on this queue out there for 90 minutes. I have come in after 90 minutes plus. I have reversed, opened my full tank. No, 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 babe, come, 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 come. What are you talking about? It is my turn for you to lift that nozzle and push it into my pump. And you are telling me that fuel has finished. I said, no, 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 babe, come, 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 come now. This kind of joke is expensive. I don't like this kind of joke. I don't like this kind of joke. No, 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 no. Come, 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 come now. No, explain. No, he said, oh, God, fuel has finished. I looked to the attendant be behind me. The guy don't stop. The one by the right, the one don't stop. Hey, what is this baby? They are natural. She said, Oga, come. You see that other pump? He said, see that guy selling there without uniform? That's our manager. Go and meet him. I went and met the guy. Oga, I beg. I've been here for the past 19 minutes. I need your help. He said, Oga, this pump is for whatever. He said whatever he was announcing. The way he was speaking English, I didn't understand what he was saying. He said and said and said. I repeated myself. The guy said, no, we can't sell for a new for I said, I beg now, please, I've been here. He said, no, 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 we're not selling. And the guy actually did not. I stood there. I, I, I was in, I was in, that's, I was enraged. Like, I was enraged. Like, chai, 90 minutes plus, close to two hours. And it's not as if I was still on the queue, no. It's my turn, and you say four has finished. Chai. Now, guess what? I drove, in fact, I didn't even bother closing my tank. I just drove out like that. I didn't know. It was when I got to the gate that the uh, security man said, okay, hold on, hold on. And I stopped. He went and closed the fuel plant for me. And I drove out of the filling station in anger. I was angry. Chai. I was angry, very angry, very angry. And as I was driving out, I noticed that some people, we are still on the entrance gate, queuing to the end, and fuel has finished inside. They're not even aware, they didn't know. They were still queuing, if you see the queue long down, and they were queuing inside. But I just continued driving down. As I was driving down, I, I was so bitter. I said, what nonsense? How can I just wait, wait? That moment became a reflection time for me while I drove down. Why did I not get out of the car to go and check what was happening inside the filling station? No, why? No, no, why, why did I just sit in the car for 90 minutes waiting for them to open the gate? Why did I not get out? Why did I not get down from the car and go and find out what was going on in the filling station? Why did I even stop at that filling station? That's the fill, first filling station immediately that, that serves petrol current, that's working currently immediately after the city gate. Why didn't I, why didn't it occur to me? Why didn't I think? that everybody coming out of city gates will queue there, definitely. A lot of people will think that going further down, there might not be first. So this one where they see, made them catch up. It became a reflection. I said, why didn't I sit down and calculate the number of cars in front of me that even if they opened the gate, 30 cars needed to go in first before me. Why didn't I think of that? And that brings me to the discussion I, I have for us today. Will I say 
it was the will of God for me to not to get full? Or will I take responsibility for not doing what I was meant to do to make it easier and better for myself? I don't know if somebody is following this. There are things that has happened to us in life and we're very quick to say it is God's will. God is not, God does, is not a dealer of failure. God does not deal out failure. Because many times we use this statement to, to, to equal, to, to, to average our failure, our weakness, our things, our averageness, what we should have done better. Now, the question was this. What if I had gotten out of the car 10 minutes on staying in that queue, gone into the into the into the first station and realized the because when I it was when I drove in after 19 minutes that I realized about more than 10 pumps, only three or four we are serving, which means which means the, 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 the station was running down on petrol. It was towards the end of 19 minutes that I actually took a count of the number of cars in front of me and realized that we are 30. Because it was not just the 10 cars in front of me, there were other two rows in addition to mine. Why didn't I think? So many times we use this to tell ourselves to, to make ourselves feel good. We, take a, we use this to shift blame that should have come to us and also giving us the power to make it better next time, and then we settle. Now let's 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 take it further. Looking at our business, are there opportunities that you have missed or you did not take, and you said, and you were very quick also to conclude immediately, it is God's will. I want us to understand this: everything that God does is good. Everything that God does is good. Now, if that, since that is the case, why then is there, should there have been a way we should have done something better before we now conclude, okay, this is the will of God? Or the first point of, 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 of solace, we run to it is the will of God. And we don't sit down and ask ourselves, is there something I should have done better? Now, let's look at this. Have you ever lost a prospect? Have you ever lost a prospect? And next thing you tell yourself is the will of God. Have you ever? Let's say this prospect is someone, a colleague in the office, someone that sits right beside you. You never bother to show them the business. And all of a sudden, this your, your colleague sends you a text message. Hi, James. I just connected to one of the 21st century CEOs and I send them your name and number. Let me know if they contact you. Meaning that your colleague, whom you could have shown the business, have connected to the business. And now what do you say? It is the will of God that he should not sign up under me. Hello? What if you were more proactive and recommended him? Is somebody getting my line of thought? What if you were what? More proactive and sent him the message the moment you connected. Am I speaking to somebody? Let's go further. Have you ever invited people to a presentation and none of them signed up? And the next conclusion you got, got to is, it is the will of God that I, I don't get a sign up in this meeting. Have you sat down and asked yourself, was there something I should have done better that would have increased the chances of this prospect signing up? Am I communicating? What if I was at the presentation venue before this prospect came and welcomed him or her and get, spoke with him, told him one or two things before he went into the meeting. What if I waited for him or her at the end of the presentation and had a close down with him and my leader? What if I had done that? Would it have increased the chances of this person signing up? Is somebody beginning to get my line of thought? Let's take this further. 
Is there someone in your team who have lost steam and doesn't show up on any activities in the business? And the next conclusion you go to is, it is the will of God. God does not want him to be my leader. It is not, God does not want, no, see, we, we need to understand something. Is there anything you could have done better to make this downline of yours stay put and not leave? Is there a mentorship you should have given? Is there an activity you should have done with them or even told them how to do it? Is there something that you could have done that if you have done it, probably, probably they might have stayed longer. Are we beginning to get this? Let's take it further. Have you, is there, has there been an opportunity for you growth in your business that you missed out on? You know, I was having a discussion with Ambassador Mike and he told me a story and I'm going to share it with us. I want us to listen because sometimes we miss opportunities and we don't, if we, 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 the quickest thing we do is this. We, we, we say it is the will of God. I was having a discussion with Ambassador Mike and he told me this story. He said that there was this um, leader of his, this leader of his who has been doing so well, grown a big team. Now this leader does about 4 million, 5 million, 6 million every month. Okay. And then when we migrated from 2.0 to 3.0, okay, when we migrated for 2.0, 3.0, now this guy decided, this leader that does about 4 million, 5 million, 6 million, decided to add the megaverse to his accounts, the megaverse. Now he has legs in his business, places that pay him three times, four times. Now there is a place in his business that pays him four times, okay? Four times. But the thing is this, in that place that pays him four times, in that particular place that pays him four times, he has two downlines that are coming up. And whichever place he places, he places himself, it will still pay him four times. So in no way does it affect him. In no way does it affect him. If he places it on the person on the left, he will still pay him four times. If he places it on the person on the right, he will still pay him four times. So what did this guy do? He said, okay, I'm going to give this person on the left who has been there working hard, putting a lot of effort. Let me give him the opportunity to have me as a downline. Let me give him the opportunity to have me as a leader in his business. Let me give him the opportunity to not worry about a particular leg in ever in his business because I am going to open my Megaverse account under this downline. So they looked at the DTC and Ambassador Mike said, okay, this is your downline. Put it there, it still doesn't change anything, but use it to support his, his business. And so this guy calls up this downline and says, hey, guy, this is what I'm about to do. I've, I've noticed the effort you are putting in this business, and I want to support you. I want to give you a support that is going to change everything in your business. I want you to only dance in the business while I beat the drum for you. All you have to do is what? I, all I want, what I want to do for you is this. I am going to sign up my Megaverse account, my 3.0 account under a leg in your business. Choose whichever place you want, whichever place you want me to put it under your downline. I'm going to put it there and every sign up I'm going to work on going forward is are going to be under that Megaverse account. Everyone, because that's the only place I'm working on going forward. So give me a, a, your upline ID and I am going to put this person on that. I'm going to put myself under you and become your downline. This person that is, was willing to become this uh, teammate's downline is someone that makes four, five, six million every month. And then they, he cuts the call. One hour passed. This teammate did not send the upline detail. 
Two hours passed, he did not send it. Three hours passed, he did not send it. Four hours passed, he did not send it. Five hours passed, he did not send it. Six hours passed, he did not send it. Seven hours passed, he did not send it. Eight hours passed, he did not send it. Nine hours passed, he did not send it. 10 hours passed, he did not send it. 11 hours passed, he did not send it. 12 hours passed, he did not send the upline detail. And guess what? This leader of Ambassador Mike now went to the person on the right, requested for the upline detail. In less than one hour, the person sent it and he signed up his Megabus account under this person on the right. Now the person on the left, at his own time, now sent the details and the leader said, no, the opportunity has gone to someone else. And the person on the left who said, I don't think it was the will of God. I don't think it was the will of God. I do not think, I just concluded it was not the will of God. Now, the question is this, do we also think it was not the will of God or did someone become careless about an opportunity that was right in his hands? There are, what if, this person that was giving the offer the first time got home immediately. In fact, before he even got home, there and then he gave the he gave he gave he gave the upline. No, take, take, no, no, my leader, you want to no take, 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 take. What if the person had done that immediately? Would it have been the will of God? Because we attribute our carelessness, we attribute our mistakes and say it is the will of God. God is not a dealer of failure. No, God is not. Everything God does is good. Everything God does is good. We, that person has made a mistake, right? The other person has been careless about an opportunity, possibly taking some things for granted. Ah, I don't get them, I don't get them. <laughs> My leader is under me, I don't, I don't eh? And you have not even secured it, hello? Let's go further. Have you fallen apart with your leader and you now say, no, it's the will of God that I don't work with him anymore. It's the will of God. Have you missed a qualification? You should have been part of those to be celebrated today. And you tell yourself, it's not the will of God that I go to Dubai this time. It's not the will of God. So my time will come. What is mine is mine. What is mine will be, what is mine? No. Has this ever happened to you? Do you truly think there is something you could have done better? Could there have been sincerely something you could have done better? Because we are now saying, okay, this person on the left that lost out on this opportunity could have done something better. What about you? What about me? Has there been chances that called up, that showed up, that we should have grabbed right with our hands? That prospect that was in front of us, we, we said, no, this one no go do the business, or this one is too wealthy. And what happens? Next week, somebody shows them the business. That person becomes a top leader in the business. Now, let's take it a step further. Many things we quickly conclude could have been the will of God had happened to us because we were careless or we took some things for granted. Let me share some things with us. Number one, the question you will ask yourself is this. Could this have been the will of God or was I timely 
with taking advantage of it. Was I timely at recommending or sending a text message to this person to attend the presentation? Was I timely at doing follow-up and not saying I will do it next week? Was I there on the opportunity at the right time? Number two, was my number adequate? Well, no, you know, after that, when I left that filling station and I was driving down and reflecting on all these things, the first thing I did was to take responsibility. And the one I, I, there are things I failed to do. Now, guess what it gave me power to do by the grace of God? It gave me power to start creating a scenario for buying fuel in scarcity. And the scenario was this. I will never again stay on a queue with more than 10 cars in front of me. If it is 11, I drive away. Did you get that? Number two thing I got there was, why should I take the, next, the first option as the only available option? Now let's bring this down to our, our numbers. Could you have prospected more to have more people to invite? Could you have invited more people to have more people to, to attend? Or did you just conclude that the number you invited was enough to give you the number of attendees in the event? Was there something you could have done better? Let's take it further. Even that invitation you made, that follow-up you did, did you do it professionally, the right way? Did you do it the way it should be done? Did you do, use the right scripts? How was your emotion or how were your emotions when you were making those calls? Let's take it further. Did you take any part of the process for granted? Hey, this guy on the left, this guy on the left has already concluded. Hey, okay, I have, in fact, eh, hey, my leader is going to be my downline. Boy, let me be the next person to be celebrated. Let me go. Oh, my God, is this me that this thing is happening to? Hey, when you come busy, who I be now? Who I be? Eh? Who I be such a favor coming to me? You got into so much excitement that you lost out on the opportunity. Now, let me tell us something, because some of us may not understand this. Do you know that happiness and fear have the same common denominator? Happiness and fear. Let me use the word excitement and fear. Yeah, I think that's what. Excitement and fear have common denominators. Do we know? The common denominator for both of them is that both of them are emotions. And because both of them are emotions, if you don't properly manage both of them, they can actually cost you a loss. You are so excited that you are carried away by the excitement that you now forgot what you should do. That's why you see some people, they get a new job, they are so excited about the new job, that they don't, they even forget to prepare with the right things to resume at the job. And they come late on the first day, they are giving query on first day of work. <laughs> Some people buy a new car, they are so excited about the car and they forget the reason, they drink to stupor and then accident in the first day. On the other side, fear. Hey, I don't know. Are you sure I'll be able to do this? And then they don't do what they're supposed to do. Both are emotions. How do you handle them? Moderately? Secure the opportunity and enjoy later. Secure the opportunity and deal with your fears. How do you handle it? Now, let me tell us something. For us to be effective at doing this business, let us stop being quick to saying and telling ourselves that this is God's will. Till we have done everything that we should have done, that is expected of us. You've prayed about it. You've done the work involved. You've, you've, you've assessed the work. And then you can now say, okay, this is the will of God. And now let me tell us this. Our benchmark for assessment should be 
the benchmark for assessment and not our own benchmark. Let me repeat that. Our benchmark for assessment should be the benchmark, should be that benchmark for assessment and not our own personal benchmark for assessment. Take for instance, what is the benchmark of prospecting for a full-timer? 20, 30, whatever it is. Okay, let's say 20. And now you have been prospecting five, 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 five as a, as a full-timer. Five, six, seven, five, six, seven. And now when you invite in the entire week, only one person shows up. And you say, okay, it is the will of God. It, what is my will? Now, when my time comes, when my time comes, the question is this. What you have placed in your mind as the benchmark, is that the benchmark for that particular activity? Are we, am I communicating? Because when we choose our own benchmark and expect the results that the set benchmark should bring, we will only be deceiving or lying to ourselves. So what would, should you do when you have lost an opportunity, when you have lost a chance, when you have fallen short of your anticipated results? I want you to know this, and I have repeated this for the past three weeks. No shame. There is no need to be ashamed of. When, I, when, I, when what happened to me yesterday happened, I told myself, Vincent, you cost it, man. You messed up. Yes, you really messed up. You sat in for 90 minutes. You didn't get your butts down to go and find out what's happening in the filling station. Why didn't you calculate all this before? What, what, why, why didn't you do that? So now let me tell you what happened when I accepted the responsibility. I got the strength. I, 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 I received this rejuvenation to look for a way out. My mind opened to the opportunity that you can do this again, but better. Because I didn't want to start blaming the manager that refused to sell to me. I didn't want to start blaming the pump attendant that didn't inform me three cars before me that 12 was about to, I didn't have to do that, I didn't do that. I took it upon myself that Vincent, you totally messed up. There are things you should have done better that you did not do. So there is no shame. You lost that prospect. I tell you today, no shame, bro. You've lost that teammate, my brother, my sister, no shame. Yes. Take ownership of it. You've, you've, you've fallen apart with your leader, no shame. No shame. When you accept there is no shame, what happens? Number one, let me hide this. Uh, hide. You take responsibility for the outcome that you have created. I took responsibility for it. There was nobody I wanted to blame anymore. I wanted to blame myself. And guess what? The moment I made that decision, listen to this. I drove down further past Lube Federal Housing. I passed Dunamis Dome. And there was a filling station, a very new mobile, mobile filling station. As I was driving, I, I, I saw cars, they looked few. I drove closer and realized there were another three rows. I calculated quickly. There are about seven, eight cars in each row, seven, eight, nine in each row. And what it means is that give or take another 30 cars before me. Do you know what I did? I, I turned immediately. No, I didn't wait to find out. You don't understand. The moment I noticed another 30 cars, how many pumps are selling? I saw the pumps, about three pumps. There were other pumps, but they were not serving. And there are another 30 cars. I said, no, 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 be today. No, 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 it can't be today. Pata, pata, I go back home with this car. No, no, I can't, no, no. I, I didn't wait. I just, in fact, I just trafficated to my left and turned out back to the road. Guess what? I continued moving. I drove down further and there was another filling station selling again with some queue. As I drove into their entrance gate, 
I counted again. There were some cars. But I noticed also there is a free pump that someone was serving but about two, three cars. And what did I do? I drove closer. The moment one car moved in front of me, I drove towards the pump, having about a few cars in front of me. And in less than 15 minutes, I got my full. Now, what has this taught me? So many things. So many things that if I can take responsibility for my actions, it gives me opportunity to look for a better way out. Next thing, it gave me time to reflect and get the memo. The things that has happened to you, have you sat down and reflected? And rather than shift the blame, take ownership and look for a better way to do the same thing should such opportunity show itself again. Next thing, were you going to write out the things you could have done better? What are the things I could have done better? I couldn't write because I was driving, but the things I now learned how to do better was Next time you meet a long queue, and that's the only option you have, get down and survey your options. Get down and survey the scenario. Get down and assess the scenario, okay? What could you have done better? Walk into the filling station. Now, what could you have done better with that prospect that is now somebody else down line? Could you have prospected the person immediately you signed up? Could you have followed up better? Could you have been more timely? Could you have invited more people? Could you have been there yourself on time rather than coming anyhow? Could you have dressed better as you were coming for the meeting? Now, when you identify those things you could have done better, it's not enough to just identify it. If I had just identified the mistakes I made or the things I could have done better and gone back home, I would have learned nothing. But I was willing to identify those things and do what? Repeat the process, but this time repeat them in a better way. That's why when I walked to the second station and I saw another queue with two or three pumps selling and about 30 cars in front of me, what did I do? Also, turn reverse, run, run. No, my mental filter was like, are you crazy? The same thing again. Is it because the name of the filling station is no more AA Rano, it's now Mobile? Oh, yo, 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 turn. That's the same ship in the same clothing. Turn, I turned straight. I was willing to repeat the process. Are you willing to repeat the process? but this time better. Are you willing to go out again and, 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 and prospect, but this time better? Are you willing to sit down and make more invitation calls, but this time with the script and better with the right composure? Are you willing to show up at that event better? Are you willing to present better? Are you willing to look at what you did that you could do better? Because there is no shame, my brother, my sister. There is no shame. And then, Look out for another opportunity. Let me tell us this. You could have lost a chance. You could have lost a prospect. You could have lost a growth, you could have lost a growth slot. But I tell you this: so far, God lives. Opportunities will keep coming to our ways. The thing is this: be vigilant enough, pray for the grace, be open-minded enough. So that when such opportunity shows up again, you do not make the same mistake that you made earlier. You can make another mistake, but let it not be the mistake that you made in the past. Let me say that again. When another opportunity shows itself, you can make another mistake. Yes? Because mistakes means we are growing, right? But let it not be the mistake that you made in the past. Let it not be that. If it make the same mistake you have made in the past, what it simply shows is that you are not growing. It means you are not learning. It means the experiences of the past have not formed the lessons of your tomorrow. Did anybody get this? So I want to tell us this, it doesn't matter what has happened, what truly really matters is this, that you take responsibility, that you reflect and get the message out of it, that you write out the things you could have done better and you push yourself, repeat the process, but only better this time, and then look out for another opportunity and keep getting better at it. I hope someone gets value from this message. I hope someone grabs one or two things today 
from this message that will help us, that we help them, that we help 